Uh, look, man, I, I never tell y'all this because usually when we watch them, they're cool or whatnot, but they don't have much rewatch or replay value. But for this one, if you did not get a chance to watch this past Ravens presser, please, I, I promise you, you will not regret it. You ain't even got to watch Hall's part. You ain't even got to watch Lamar's part. Watch MP. Watch Marcus Peters' part. That's all you need to watch. Justin Houston, he was, his part was really good too. But please watch and listen to Marcus Peters. Listen to his voice when he speaks, man. That like today, that what with what he was saying, it hit, man. It hit like on another level, man. He started getting a little emotional. I know y'all caught that. Those of y'all that watched it. But you could tell, man, he really meant uh, everything he said. And I know we for this, we're going to be a little bit out of order. Because, of course, Harv spoke first, then Lamar spoke, then MP, then uh, Justin Houston. And we usually go in order, but today, no. It's going to be a little bit different. We're going to start off with Marcus Peters, man. Um, this first question that he got asked was about Justin Houston. Uh, how he felt having Justin Houston as a teammate. Again, I was about to say Justin Houston. Uh, he said it's been fun, and he brings extra leadership. He's been helping the new guys and said the young guys, they appreciate it like crazy. And timing is everything because we were just talking about that in the video that we dropped earlier today. Um, where Calais Campbell, he was talking about the things that he's been given to the young guys, the information from his experiences and whatnot. But to hear Marcus Peters talk about how Justin Houston is doing the same thing, it's just, it, it's, it's great, man. And that goes such a long way. Um, now, he talked about how he never thought that he would have gotten traded by the Chiefs. He said he thought he was going to be there forever. But that's just the business side of football, though. He said sometimes life gets tough. And he said he never thought that a trade would feel like that. Because it's sort of like you being with a company. Th this company may have been your first job. The first people that offered you a job, full-time job, and you're working for them and whatnot. And you've been there for a little while. And you're like, okay, things, things are going pretty good. Yeah, we had some little rough patches here and there. But overall, things are pretty good. My performance is good. I'm putting up numbers and whatnot. We doing it. Then you get fired. And it's like, oh, well, what happened? So that can really like hit you different, especially if you've never, ever been in that situation before. So when he was saying this, like you, you could feel it, man, for sure. Um, he said he also had a good experience with the Rams, but said it just didn't feel like he was playing football in a place where he wanted to. Uh, and he dived a little more deeper into that in a little bit. Well, he said when he came to the Ravens, it was a nice young group. He said guys were upbeat. Uh, and he said he loved being in the same building as Lamar Jackson. Said he loved it. And we remember, man, when Lamar first took over, not even when he was first drafted, because it wasn't his team yet. But when he took over, the whole vibe of the Ravens just changed, man. The whole energy of the Ravens just changed. And if you had been watching Ravens from the previous years, it was clear as day. It was clear as day that there was a shift in the way that these Ravens were running things and the way that they were operating. It was a complete shift. So, and that shift was to be a little more relaxed, have a little more fun, or actually a lot more fun. And just the, the energy change was crazy, man. So, man, I, I knew exactly what he was talking about, man. Uh, he said it's been dope. <laughs> he said Baltimore reminds him of Oakland. A little bit. And he was genuine about it, man. He was super, super genuine about it. I, I, I just, I, I loved, again, please, if you didn't get a chance to watch this, please watch it. I guarantee you, you will not regret it. Just, you could just watch MP's part alone. Um, he also talked about with the Rams, he said that they did a lot of great team bonding. And we know that's important. If you're going to be working with somebody and if you're going to have the best uh, output of results as possible with your coworkers, it's nice when you guys get along. Y'all don't got to be friends. You ain't even got to be buddy-buddy. I mean, that helps, but you ain't even got to do all that. But when y'all get along, it just makes the process that much smoother. And when y'all are friends, it makes it even smooth. It makes things a little bit easier, too. Um, but he said with the Rams, they did a lot of great team bonding. He said that he, that he feels that they didn't do enough of that in Kansas City. And when he said it, he didn't say it like in a... Um, he didn't say it in a... Like a way like, oh, man, Kansas City, oh, those guys, they weren't even close. Shame on them. No, he didn't say it like as a dig to the Chiefs or anything like that. He just said he didn't feel like they didn't. He said that he feels like they didn't do enough of that. 
Um, he said when he was with the Rams for a joint practice against the Ravens. See, them joint practices are very beneficial. Um, he said that, uh, he, that he, he saw that the, the bonding that the Ravens did. Um, and with that bonding, he said that the, uh, he recognized that the Ravens, they really appreciated that. And that was special. He could tell it was just something different, man. Um, and, and that's, again, them joint practices, uh, that allows not only the coaches to get an up-close look at these players and whatnot, uh, but the players to get an up-close look at the coaches, an up-close look at the vibe on, on the other team, because you never know where life is going to take you. So for, for MP to have seen that when he was a member of the Rams, uh, it obviously stuck with him because he brought it back up again. Uh, then he talked about Lamar Jackson. He said Lamar Jackson is just unique. He says it's like when Vic first came on the scene, it was just different. Uh, and he said that the game is at Lamar Jackson's disposal. Uh, and he said that he can do what he wants out there. And, and that's why it's important that the Ravens put the right pieces around him. He talked about Sammy Watkins, Bateman, Hollywood. He brought up Duvernay, Pro. He brought up all of them. Um, and he said that it, it's been wonderful to see Lamar Jackson just grow. Now, this part right here, man. This part right here, it this is where he got me, man. Um, he said both him and Lamar, they come from places where football is their only way out. And whether you're from somewhere like that or not, um, when you when you know people personally that where that that is what it is, and that is like because a lot of people for some stuff that you can't relate to. Then you may not be able to understand it uh, For some stuff that it, it, Whether you've been through it yourself Or whether you know people that have been through it Or may be going through it, it It won't hit the same But if you actually have been through it Or you know people that have gone through it Or going through it Then it's like, oof, man But that, that was just um, It was something serious hearing him talk about that But he said that um, He said Lamar Jackson it's, it's nice that Lamar Jackson always goes back home And shows the kids that it's possible to get out and it just remind me of, uh, see, th this is why. This is why with, because uh, I know some people be like, oh, man, why y'all always defending Lamar Jackson? Why you always got to bring up when this analyst says this, this analyst says that, da 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 That's why. That's why. Because if Lamar Jackson was this bad person, he was out there doing all this bad stuff, and da, 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 and, if, and if he was giving them reason to be saying all this reckless stuff about it, oh, okay, cool. But the fact that stuff like this, man, stuff like this, he said that Lamar always goes back home and shows the kids that it's possible to get out. And again, having gone to the L Lamar Jackson Fun Day this year, and seeing him interact with all these kids, all these people, him giving a high five to Carter, saying what's up to Carter, even though Carter was a little bit nervous, that hits, man. So it was just, it was nice hearing MP talk about LJ. And another thing, too, with how, just backing up a little bit, how Marcus Peters said the game is at Lamar Jackson's disposal. When he said that, um, and he said he can do what he wants out there. Again, like we said, with Lamar Jackson, the guys that put on the cleats, the shoulder pads, the jerseys, oh, they respect his game. But the ones that put on the suits and all they do is commentate, they try not to respect his game. You know, deep down inside, they do. And they like, but they like, man, this guy, he's not normal. He's not regular. He's not what we're used to. He's not traditional. So you game recognize game, man. We said it before, we'll say it again. Game recognized game. So the dudes that's going against him, like literally going against Lamar, and defensive coordinators too, offensive coordinators as well, yeah, they 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 get it and they understand it. Um he also talked about how Ravens, they just need to really put in the work in order to be good. Uh he said, because yeah, they obviously got a nice team, but it's not gonna mean nothing if they don't put in the work. So he said they gotta play fast and they gotta play together. Also, uh, toward the end of his part of the press, he talked about Willie Sneed and how just uh, he's going to do everything that he can uh, to help his team out. Um, and just like he did when he was with the Ravens. So shout out to Willie Sneed, man. Um, and he said the job isn't finished until they're Super Bowl champs. And that's true. 
So they could have the best defense in the world. They could have this and that, all these accolades, interceptions, da 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 But he said the job is not finished until they are Super Bowl champs. And that's true. So shout out to uh, Marcus Peters because this, like, I, I, I liked Marcus Peters a lot before. I liked him. I, I love that he, that dude is himself. Harbaugh said it, um, when did he say it? I think he said it about maybe a month ago. He said, well, Marcus Peters, he said he has this, uh, <coughs> excuse me, this persona uh, from people that they, they look at him like, oh, man, he's just this trash talking dude. He always get into it, players on the field. And, da, 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 da. and he said, yeah, that's him on the field. But he said off the field, completely different guy. He said he's one of the nicest guys that he knows. And that got brought up when Marcus Peters, after a uh, after a practice, whether, whether it was training camp or not, um, I think it was early on in training camp, but he gave a kid his cleats. So... Stuff like that, man, it just, um, it it just, it hits different, man. So, I just, like I said, I, I like Marcus Peters before, but now I, I, I love Marcus Peters, man. Love him, and he just, love him. <laughs> gotta, gotta get me a 24 jersey, man. That dude, like, this was a just great, I, and it was genuine, too. Yeah, he was up there answering questions, but he was just, he, he, he wasn't even just answering questions, but he was talking. He was talking and he was talking from the heart and you could tell he was talking from the heart. So that's what made it just that much better. Then um, the last person who went on was Justin Houston. We're going to talk about Hobbs and Lamont a little bit, but Justin Houston, he came on and he said it's just exciting to open the season on Monday Night Football. Like, yeah, the, the world is watching. Everybody done played their games already. Everybody's watching you now. Uh, he said that um, the depth on this team is, is special. Because they have starters playing as backups. Starters playing as backups. And yeah, that is depth. So we, um, we look forward to seeing what these guys do uh, and just how they execute this season. Because this, like, with the offense, we know what the offense is capable of. I mean, they've been the number one offense the past two years. Uh, even though in playoffs things have flooded, uh, but in regular season, they've been the number one, the number one scoring team the past two years. Nobody has put up more points than the Ravens the past two years. But I think um, in that same time span, uh, I think they actually been the number one scoring defense, too. And that is something that I did not know until like a, about a few days ago. That's crazy. Uh, but anyway, he said that uh, he doesn't see anybody stopping the Ravens. And like, <laughs> if you saying that, like you, you definitely, you confident, like you confident, confident. You saying that now, right before the Monday Night Football? Ooh, okay, man. Uh, and he said, um, with the Ravens, the one of the things that he loves about the team that is that they let him be him. He said, uh, they the the scheme is a perfect fit. Uh, he also talked about how the young guys ask every question known to man, uh, but he said he's happy to help. Um, now, with going to Vegas, because a lot of people think, oh, yeah, you're going to go to the club. We're going to go uh, hit up the casino, da 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 But he said it's a business trip. So uh, they'll they'll party later. <laughs> Hopefully they have reason to party after Monday night. But he said they'll party later. But they got to stay focused be in uh, where they they got to stay focused on where they want to be at the end of the season. And that's true. I think we would all agree. But he said it starts with week one. And it does. Now, um, he was asked about Adafi away. He said with Adafi away, uh, when his son plays Madden and his son creates a player in Madden, he said that's what Adafi away is. He's like a creative player. Uh, <laughs> that, that was interesting to see, man. Um, he also talked about how the young guys always ask about his technique. Um, but he, he talked about how it, it, it's a benefit for everybody because he said the better that they play, the better that he plays. It, it just makes everybody's job easier. And that makes sense. Like, because he could be one of these veterans coming to the building. Yeah, Raven sign me because I'm nice like that. Y'all see my resume. Y'all see my production. I'm good. He could be one of those guys like that. And then when the young guys come to help him, he's like, uh, go to coaching staff for that. Go to coach. I, I ain't a coach. But the fact that he's embracing the young guys and realizing, hey, th this is a team. This is a team. If we all do our part and, and if, if I can make you better. That makes me better. If I can make your job easier for you, that makes my job easier for me. That makes our jobs easier for us. Everybody benefits. So it, it, it just makes sense. Um, and he also talked about Wink. Said he loves the atmosphere with Wink and said they treat you like a man here. 
So that's that's pretty important. Um, he was asked about getting 100 sacks, and he said he'll get it. He ain't worried about it, but he said he'll get it um, as long as obviously he's healthy and whatnot. No, but he said he just wants to win and get a Super Bowl. That's it. That's his biggest goal: win, win, and get a Super Bowl. Said he's ready to go. Uh, and one of the last things that he was asked about was Matabike. Said with Justin Matabike, he said he hadn't heard of Matabike till he got to the Ravens. But he was like, "Oh, where, where'd y'all find this dude at?" Because uh, he said again, he said he's another special guy, another special player. So, man, listening to this presser, if you weren't already excited for Monday night, then after listening to this presser, I, I know you are now. I, and if you already were excited, I know you are that much more uh, excited about Monday night. Um, now going to uh, Lamar. So I guess we'll talk about Hobbs last. But going to Lamar, his first words of the presser were finally. Finally. Because it's finally here. It's, it's time. Uh, he, he said that uh, coaches, they, they talked about him. And they, they talked about, no, they talked about the players and told them not to peak too soon. Funny, I remember hearing that a lot uh, two years ago. About, oh, have the Ravens peaked too soon? And I was just thinking, no. I don't think they peaked too soon, but they just... In the playoffs, they just, you know, we don't even need to get into it. Anyway, he said he had no clue uh, or has no clue what the atmosphere is going to be like uh, come Monday night. He said he he never played uh, in Oakland before, um, so he never got that chance. Uh, now, his second game of his his second start of his career was against the Raiders, but that was at M&T Bank. Um, so this will be his second time playing the Raiders. Yeah, second time playing the Raiders. And I remember in that Raiders game, where the Ravens, they they were going against from what they were letting all the outside noise in because they were going against from everything that was working the previous week, and even everything that was working that week. Because in the first half they were running some, but they were passing a lot, and the run was working, but they were still trying to force the pass because everybody was looking at the stat sheet without looking at the game. And they were like, "Oh man, Lamar ran the ball too much. Oh man, he took too many hits." Again, they were watching the stat sheet but not watching the actual game. So the Ravens, they let that creep into their head and they let that creep into their game plan. And then in the first half, they were like this. But second half, they were like, you know what? Let's get to what worked. Let's get to what worked effectively last week and what worked even effectively in the first half. Second half, they came out running and they just, that's when they took off against the Raiders. Matt Judon, I think that's the game where he had like three sacks. Uh, he almost slipped and hurt himself uh, when he was celebrating. Cause he was, no problem with celebrating, but he to run into the tunnel and all that. Oh, boy, you wild for that one. Um, but but ain't, ain't no sense in talking about the almost because it ain't happened. Uh, so good for Matt Judon. But, um, yeah, they, they started taking off on the Raiders uh, in the second half. Hopefully that'll be a sign of things to come. Uh, but anyway, back to Lamar. Um, he was asked if he feels that he needs to do more with guys being out and injured. And that was a really good question. Uh, but he said he always feels that he needs to, he tries to do more and tries to do as much as he can, but without doing too much all at the same time. Um, and he said the offense, despite all the injuries, they're still confident. And he said he feels like the guys, they'll still be ready. Uh, he was asked about the report that came out, what was that, about a week ago, about him getting vaccinated. Uh, he said that's between him and his family. And, and that was it. Um, and with Le'Veon Bell, he said he hopes to see Le'Veon Bell on the roster soon. <coughs> and he said it's better uh, to be playing with Le'Veon Bell than against him. Uh, he said he felt bad for J.K. Dobbins. And, of course, that, that was rough because uh, he said he had been watching J.K. Dobbins work all offseason to get to the point where he was at right now. Uh, and for it to all be like taken away from just like that, man, it, it, it was super tough, man. Um, they asked about uh, his offseason and how he how his ball got better, his his spiral got better. Uh, he said it was shout out to his guy, Adam. Um, and I think we actually had a question from a subscriber a couple episodes ago about um, Lamar and the development of the spiral. I think it was from my guy, Nick Brick, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, but he said James Urban was another part of that, too, It just. The repetition, the repetition, man, uh, with helping him just get better, working on the mechanics and whatnot. Uh, and they also asked him about his week one performances. How have your week one performances just been so good? Of course, against the Dolphins, yeah, and, and then against the Browns last year. Uh, and he said it's just all about preparation and just staying locked in. And that was that. So he just, to me today, uh, definitely after that vaccination question, it, it just seemed like Lamar just... Um, Seem like he's just ready, man. As as I'm sure all of these guys are, but it just seemed like he just he didn't want to. He was just tired of talking, man. That's what it seemed like. It seemed like he was just tired of talking. He was over the talking. He just wanted to keep it moving and just just go play football, man. It seemed like he didn't want to be up there, uh, and he was just ready to go. 
which I can understand because you're so close. You are what four days away? Oh, we got to get through. Obviously, the rest of Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah, we right there, man. So, and Hobbs, Hobbs, who was actually first up to speak at this presser, uh, he said that with Le'Veon Bell, he had had a good workout, and that's why they signed him. He said he hadn't talked to uh, Andy Reid about him, uh, but he said he had a good practice and had, and he does have a chance to play this week. But I mean, he, we'll see. I don't really think he will, but we'll see. Uh, he said with Derek Wolf, it's a lingering injury. He said with Jimmy Smith, they'll see how he looks since he came back yesterday. And that was great news, man. That was great news. Jimmy, I did not expect him to. And Harbaugh, I think. Harbaugh even said a couple weeks ago, maybe like a week and a half ago, that he didn't expect Jimmy Smith to play week one. I know he said Nick Boyle, he didn't expect him to play week one. Uh, we haven't really heard about him practicing. I don't, yeah, I don't think he's practiced yet. Um, but so not expecting to see him. Uh, hmm. And with, I wonder, since they'll only have, oh, no, they got Eric Tomlinson. So, never mind. They got three tight ends. All right. So, I was getting ready to I was getting ready to say, I wonder if they'll run more like spread formation since they only have two tight ends. Um, but we'll see uh, how that goes, man. Anyway, uh, he said with uh, being familiar with Le'Veon Bell, that helped with the signing. And, obviously, they are very familiar with Le'Veon Bell since... Yeah, Le'Veon Bell has definitely uh, made a lot of plays against the Ravens. They, they had a lot of time where they actually stopped Le'Veon Bell, and they shut him down too now. Um, but they know about his game and know how effective he can be. Um, and, but John Harbaugh said something that really stuck out about Le'Veon Bell. He said he likes where his head is at. And, you know, <laughs> you know that's important, especially for Harbaugh, especially with a player uh, like a Le'Veon Bell who, ha who has a reputation. Um, does he deserve the reputation that he has? Mm-hmm. Well, how was it with Steelers? Well, he didn't want to get low ball with Pittsburgh. He wanted more guaranteed money with Pittsburgh, especially because he was, we saw everything that he did with Pittsburgh. Running game and receiving game, all the work that he put in, very productive. So he wanted a better contract. That was that. And with the Jets, <laughs> can, can you even count what happened with him in the Jets? What even did happen with him in the Jets? And then with the Chiefs, again, not a running team. So, it, it's just, it, it, it's, it's a lot, man. Um, anyway, with uh, he also talked about Trent Cannon. He said he's a speed running back. And, oh, yeah, we've been looking at Trent Cannon. We see that speed. He is definitely fast. Uh, he said they practiced against him. So, that helped. And I was like, oh, yeah, they did with the, the Panthers. So, that again, those joint practices. Same when we were just talking about Marcus Peters. Same with the with the with Marcus Peters, it gives the players a chance to see the coaches, and obviously with this one with Trent Cannon, this gave the coaches a chance to see the player, and it worked out. So he said, um, they they asked about like Super Bowl playoffs, Super Bowl, all that stuff. He said that they aren't focused on big picture or horizon questions right now. He said that they're focused on the Raiders, and I one like I know John Harbaugh. Sometimes he get up there, and he just be talking, he be saying some stuff, but I one thousand percent believed him about that because you know. Ravens, John Harbaugh, they don't play around week one. Week one, they do they do not mess around. They have been just week one, whew, they've been killing it week one. And hope that continues. Um, he said he gets mad every time that he sees or reads about Darren Waller doing something good since he used to be with the Ravens. Now he did say it in a joking way. He wasn't like, oh, I just hate no. He was saying it more like he's proud of him. Happy for him that it, it obviously worked out for him with the Raiders. Uh, and he said that Darren Waller is hard to stop. But they know where he is at all times. But he's still going to be hard to stop. So he didn't say that they figured out Darren Waller. <laughs> so, but yeah, man, this was, it was a great press. This was the, the, the best, this may have been probably the, the, the best Ravens presser that I may have ever watched. Um, best one. And again, like I said, Marcus Peters' part, it just, uh, it, it hit big time. So y'all get it when you get Get a chance, watch it for yourself. Even again, even if you just watch Marcus Peters' part alone, and that's it, it'll be worth the time. So I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. I know this one went on for for a while, but it was a lot to cover. It was a lot to say, but it was a lot of good stuff that was in this. A lot of great stuff uh, that was in this presser. Uh, I'll see you all later on. I appreciate you all. Thank you for supporting. Um, thank you to all the the new team. Keep it clean, patrons. I see y'all. Y'all names will be added to the, uh, the the patron list that comes up at the beginning of any edited videos. Um, thank you all for supporting. I appreciate it a lot. And we out.